I'll start the recording if everyone's okay with that. Definitely. And if it, if it's not okay, let me know, and I don't have to record. They said the other rooms will be recorded, so we'll have enough recordings. But if everyone's okay with that, we'll record. Yep. If Go ahead, Larry. All right. So I'll be the first listener. Would anyone like to volunteer to be the first speaker? And when that's established, I'll start a five-minute timer. This is the toughest part of the whole circle. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to if I don't know if you can see. Can we see me? All right. Oh, I know. That's why. There, now we can see you. <laughs> hey, welcome. Hi there. Um, I forgot I put a bit of tape over there. <laughs> um, yes, I had my hand up for ages. Like, oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you, Larry. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. If, if yeah. If that's all, all right. right all right, would you like to begin? And just remember to pause after one or two ideas for the reflection. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Larry. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I well, I first want to say I'm I'm really happy to be here because I think it's a yeah it's a really important um, subject. Um, I see a lot of conflicts in the world, and I do think that empathy and this process, empathy circles, has a, a real value in 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 uh, trans transforming that conflict. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Aran, I hear you saying that you're happy to be here. And that you consider that empathy and empathy circles is an important um, process for the world that's in a lot of conflict these days, something like that. Yeah, exactly that. Thank you, Larry. And yeah, I think, I mean, I think I I would say maybe 99% of, of conflict comes from people not feeling heard. And so um, having people trained and willing to to um listen empathetically and able to do that um would would go a long way to to helping a lot of situations so i'm hearing that about 99 percent of conflict is the outcome of people not feeling heard and that this is a, a wonderful way to establish practicing empathy listening and people being heard yeah exactly that i think yeah i think if we can we can um really uh start listening with empathy and understanding uh and non-judgmental uh in non-judgmental ways then um you know that is um really um would be a massive benefit and it's what humans can do if we really put our minds to it Hmm. So, Aran, I hear you saying that we could start with listening and understanding, non-judgmentally, but just listening to what someone has to say so that they feel heard. We can start with that and less judgment. Yeah, and I think that's kind of, in, in a way, you'd maybe say that's the our human you know unique selling point you know is the, our ability to to communicate across across um you know time and space and 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 if we can learn to do it um use this technology especially in 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 that kind of way then uh, yeah a lot of lot of the misunderstandings um that the, that the tower of babel kind of set up um could be uh, could be banished into history Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing the old, you know, Tower of Babel, that whole thing could be banished. And that it is just kind of a, um, I think you said, kind of a, a human selling point, or a human, it sounds like a human quality that's within human beings. It's like the solution of listening and empathy. I think you're saying is already within humans. And we could call it, this is one of the great selling points of humans, that we could actually practice something that we already have a value something like that yeah i mean it feels to me like yeah it might be in the universe who knows you know our ability to communicate in such um uh complex ways it, it, we might be the only only thing you know 
currently in the universe that that can do that so we need to learn how to yeah we need to grow up and learn how to use it properly and it just might be that as far as we know in this entire infinite universe as far as we know we're the ones who have this ability to communicate empathically with one another so let's give it a shot something like that yeah exactly that exactly that i think um, i'm probably finished there actually uh, yeah i feel fully heard all right thank you Aaron. thank you okay. so that's basically how it works i mean um we're always going to make little mistakes and then it comes back to the speaker you know if if i leave something out it's an opportunity for the speakers to say it again just to feel heard you can always say it again um and to practice that, to practice that. If you don't feel heard, it's an opportunity. Maybe say it in other words, but you know, you want to feel heard. So it's okay to repeat yourself. Nothing wrong there. <clears throat> so um, the listener becomes the speaker. Um, I, is it J-I-D-E? <clears throat> Jai, would you be my listener? Yeah, Jide. J. Jide. Jide. Gd. Jide. There's an accent on the E. Jide. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jide. Jide. I'm like, good day, Jide. <laughs> Sorry, but. Uh... <laughs> Thank you for helping me with that. Thank yeah. you. So, will you be my listener and I'll restart the five, five minute timer? Yeah, I'll be I'll be glad to listen to you. Thank you today. Yeah, I was really enjoying what Aran was sharing. I'll stop there. You did enjoy um, Aran's nice speech. Yeah, <clears throat> I really enjoyed this idea that you know, hey, as far as we know, in this whole infinite universe, we're the ones with empathy. Yes, so it, empathy appears to be unique to humans uh, um, in the universe. Uh, you find that uh, fascinating. Yeah. So far, no UFO has showed up at our doorstep and said, you know, we've got better empathy than you humans. <laughs> <laughs> so what we know so far, uh, nothing contradicts what uh, Oran thinks it is the situation of case. So, yeah, we are the naturally empathic people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our beings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, what a shame it would be if we're the ones with empathy and we end up blowing up the whole planet with nuclear weapons without practicing empathy. Yeah. yeah. So we, we have this ability. We are not using it. So there's all manner of problems all over the place, violence and all that. Yeah, and if we if we pay attention to the historians, they say the problem began back in Babylon. Yes, so it's a um, historical, um, according to the experts of history. Uh, so it, we can trace it back to to Babel. Yeah. Our challenge with uh, empathic listening. Yeah. So instead of practicing destruction with nuclear weapons, what if we practice sitting down and talking peacefully with one another? So why don't we listen and hear instead of killing? Yeah. It seems like all the great sages throughout all time have been saying this. So that's a that's a um, unanimity of opinion that this is what we should be doing, learning to listen again. <clears throat> and maybe we should rethink our political system too, because it it actually seems to contribute to the <clears throat> the violence. So maybe if we so if we make. Make it 
if we institutionalize this in our polity, uh, maybe the violence would uh, reduce. But I, I agree with Iran. It begins with us really hearing one another. So we are totally in agreement again with Iran that we, the secret is to start listening and hearing again. Yeah. <clears throat> and realize that we all actually want peace. So everybody wants peace. I don't think anyone would be in their sane mind if they said they actually want violence. Okay, so it, it would be insane for anybody to say they, they appreciate or like or want violence. I think if people can be heard, then peace becomes their natural way of being. So if we can listen, peace will become a possibility. And I'm amazed that these empathy circles offer that experience of empathy simply reflecting back what someone said. Um, so this, you, you find it fascinating that they, you, you, you find the empathy uh, circle fascinating. Uh, just, the, just the idea of repeating uh, what you hear. <laughs> right. So it gives us each of an experience of practicing, reflecting back. So we're able to try it out, um, uh, practice, try uh, until we get it. Yep. And that's my time. Katie, thank you very much. I feel fully heard. Yes. So you become the new speaker. And you can pick a new listener. We usually try to pick someone who hasn't had a chance to go yet and try to remember to pause after one or two ideas to hear the reflection. Amen. Does that mean amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Hi, <laughs> Jede. Hi, nice to you. Nice to meet you and everyone here. Yes. Um, it's um, I find this fascinating uh, because I, I've I taught um, I've taught uh, um, empathic listening for I don't know how many years maybe twenty years and um, I'm paying so much attention because I'm really learning. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 amazing. Yeah, so basically, you um, you said you you you've been teaching empathic listening for over 20 years and uh, you're still you find it amazing that you're still learning from this experience yes. that's yes. great yes um so i'm glad i could then uh, join today uh because uh it's a world of difference between uh, theory and some kind of practice and so it's not that uh, every time I teach, I get the, the, my students to practice, but um, this is uh, more profound, frankly speaking. That's that's amazing. So what, what you love about this exercise is that it puts the theory in, in practice and, and what you've been teaching and, and the theories that, that you've studied and taught, uh, you see that in practice and in this exercise. That's I agree. <laughs> and um, so you can be sure that... Uh, even after a few minutes, I, I have a lot to uh, to share with my next uh, class. So, so by the time I'm teaching next week, I'll be definitely uh, putting this in. Awesome. So your, your plan is to basically share this experience that you're having today in this empathy circle um, with your class next time and, and, and share with them how the experience was. So I'm really, uh, I'm really very grateful, uh, particularly because I really feel that um, uh, I'm essentially a mediator. I think that the my key role or key skill is uh, uh, my ears or my my ears. Yes. So, so basically, you you consider hearing 
um, as as one of your bigger assets uh, in, in 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 you, and so you enjoy this experience for that reason that it gives you that ability to listen. Yeah, I, empathically. Yes, I, I think that uh, not just my um, skill. I think that a good uh, uh, I think a good mediator, and I form mediators. I train and certify mediators. I think a good mediators, uh, the first the first skill should be a good pair of ears. Mm. So so you believe that that for um, for for anyone to be a good mediator the first skill the most important skill they need to have is um good listening skills or hearing um the other side. So every time I teach um empathic listening I get uh, them to pinch <laughs> of their ears and I will invite everybody to do that. <laughs> All right. So basically, uh, you, 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 when you teach your students, you ask them, uh, you, you, when you teach them empathic listening, you literally ask them to physically touch their ears Pinch. so they're aware <laughs> of the fact to listen. That's good. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good trick. Yes, I get them to pinch the lobe, the soft part ah. of the ear to okay. try and draw blood. Pinch until it pins, until it's painful. Yeah. <laughs> it resonates better that way. <laughs> um, and I do that to make the connection between the this skin, this pair mm. of skin, mm -hmm. where blood comes from, mm. which is the heart. Mm. And uh, I, uh, I do that to let them know that what we used to hear as good uh, peace people, conflict managers, mediators, it's not really this skin. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, so basically the, the purpose of this exercise that you have your student do to hold their earlobes is to, it's not just touching the skin, but the blood that yes. goes through that area and and coming from the heart so they can make that connection between the heart and, and listening. That's amazing. <laughs> I heard the alarm. Thanks. Thank you for sharing, Jude. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amina. Thank you for listening. Yeah, absolutely. I held my ears. That's a trick. I'll do it. <laughs> so Amina becomes the new speaker. You can speak to anyone in the group on awesome. any topic or the, the topic. And just remember to pause after one or two ideas for the reflection. But awesome. first, ask someone if they would be your your listener. Uh, Arain, would you be my listener, please? Yeah, happy to be. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so empathy. Uh, empathetic listening. To me, empathy, in order for us to be empathetic, um, I think we need to focus on our oneness and our connectedness as a human being. Once we focus on that, we don't see the difference. We see the commonality in each other. Mm, thank you. So um, what I'm hearing is that uh, empathy to you means um, a feeling of connectedness uh, between human beings. And if we focus on our commonality, then we, we automatically become um, empathetic. Maybe. Amazing. Yes, that, that's exactly the essence of what I said. And and for me personally, I was born in Afghanistan and lived in a conflict zone for um, uh, all of my childhood. Um, in just seeing living there for the first 16 years of my life and then coming to the U.S., um, I've seen the Western world as well. And I that has brought in my perspective in this topic of the bottom line in, in our human experience is that we, we are so much more in common than we are different. And as someone who's lived in two drastically different worlds, parts of my life, I have personally experienced that. Okay, so I'm hearing that you were, you were born in and, and were raised till you were 16 in, in, in Afghanistan and then came to the, to the US and having seen two uh, vastly different cultures, um, uh, it has um, 
concreted for you the the sense that we have a lot more in common than we have uh, a, a, um, in in difference. Absolutely, and I think a lot of the problems with the conflict in the world today, or in whether it's our communities here locally or uh, abroad, um, the issue is stems from ignorance and not understanding each other. Um, and once we establish that, I think that will make conflict go away and 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 begin the process of peace. Mm, so what I'm hearing is um yeah through your experiences um your 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 uh, view is that uh, uh misunderstanding and ignorance of the other person's point of view and 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 viewpoint um um uh is uh, 99% of of what what conflicts about and um if we can um understand each other then uh, we would um yeah conflict would disappear exactly and, and i think um as marianne williamson says that um, conflict peace is um, peace is not pe basically peace is the the absence of it's not that peace is the absence of conflict it's conflict is the absence of peace so if we cultivate peace within ourselves and focus on that um around us and reflect that from within that um that in and itself creates that environment of peace around us and in the world and if everyone did that we could potentially achieve world peace one day okay so i think it was a, a lady called Mar marianne williams. marianne williamson yes um, and she said that uh conflict isn't the absence of peace but peace is the absence of conflict or one of the yeah, we, I'm not sure if, right, right, right. Yes, basically peace is the uh, conflict is the absence of peace not the other way around that um, conflict happens because peace isn't doesn't exist within us okay so yeah so conflict is the absence of peace a we don't have peace within us so conflict arises and uh if your your feeling is that uh yeah if um so if we became more peaceful within then conflict mm -hmm. could could disappear Absolutely. Thank you, Aaron. That pretty much sums up what, what I was trying to say um, in this discussion. Thank you. That's great. Okay, uh, Larry, would I would you be my listener, please? Yes, already. Ready. Well, I'm just like, I'm so glad I came on this call. I mean, hearing people, um, you know, hearing Jude's, um a mission of uh, uh, teaching mediation and and i mean his I mean, um obvious passion in 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 this area is just yeah, it's really um it's really wonderful so Iran, i hear you saying you're really glad that you came on this call today and hearing today's um mission with uh, conflict resolution you're inspired by the group the whole the whole group and everything that everyone's doing is very inspiring you're glad you're here indeed yeah uh, it's uh it's wonderful to hear i think i mean that 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 uh that whole whole um uh exercise you know gets the students to hit to do with the ears and um, to remind the us about um listening through the heart is uh, extra special for me mm -hmm. and today's explanation of the exercise that he teaches his students how important it is to listen and by touching the earlobes the reminder that there's circulation that comes from the heart to listen with the heart beautiful exercise yeah really wonderful um yeah i think uh, for me i was born in in, in northern ireland um in the 70s so there was a lot of conflict uh, in, around um, my birthplace and where i lived for the first few years of my life and so, um coming to from there to england there was a lot of prejudice around being irish um so yeah conflict resolution is is massively important to me i think and you were born in northern ireland and uh, in the 70s and you've you've experienced a lot of conflict in your lifetime and you've moved to i think you said to london and um 
there was a lot of, I guess you'd say, prejudice related to where you're from, that kind of prejudice. You've experienced it in your lifetime. You've noticed that it is a problem still today. It's not just in Babylon. <laughs> it's still here with us today. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think, um, yeah, it just it, it gave me a, a, a grounding in um, how embedded conflict can be because yeah the northern irish conflict the irish conflict's been going on since you know the, the 12 the 1200s really so um yeah so and and yeah as you, as you say it's, it's still going on in lots of ways so it just shows me uh, how embedded conflict can can get mm -hmm. and in your life's experience you can see how embedded conflict appears to be within human culture and you mentioned the Northern Ireland conflict goes back to, I think you said 1200, something like that. And um, yeah, so it's been with us for a while, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, exactly. And as a childhood, it was always, yeah, how can we, how can we, um, how can we uh, resolve these things? Um, because, you know, as a child, you're just very innocent, you know, everyone should love one another and get on and be happy so why why can't we yeah and so <clears throat> when you look inside there's just like this this curious kind of innocent child that's saying looking around and saying hey why can't we all just get along and be be happy what would what, what would be the problem there and this 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 point of view from the innocent kind of child that's just curious you know really really is there another way something like that yeah i think um it also given me a a, a a a an insight into um i think you know the conflicts in africa that have been um well not to put too fine on it um um made made by by the, the colonization of the western world um uh but and it's that they it's it's they're young conflicts in lots of ways and and um judging them for carrying on after only maybe you know 50 years is 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 such a um a, a wrong-footed way of looking at things and when you look at the colonization that's been going on this is maybe 50 years been going on i think you said and there's the timer and there's stop the timer and um continue this reflection that, that there are relatively young conflicts that are in essence a continuation of other conflicts. These kinds of conflicts of one group overthrowing another group, that kind of Babylonian overthrowing your kingdom way has continued in many different conflicts throughout human history. Something like that. Yeah, I was more, more saying really that um, it, from a Western point of view, we tend to judge uh, people in Africa, India, and, and all these for have still having conflicts after you know fifty mm. years uh, being liberated. Mm. But look at our history, especially. I mean, the mm. same from my point of view with Northern Ireland. So like that, that, it took hundreds, you know, near thousands of years to get to a state where they put down arms. Mm. So in essence, who are we to judge? others <laughs> something like that <laughs> yeah exactly that yeah thank you uh, I'll, I'll leave it there thanks thanks Larry. thanks oren uh mina will you be my listener if you got it absolutely thank you i'm starting the five minute timer right now and i was thrilled when you first spoke and you said the word oneness Thank you, Larry. So um, you were happy to to have me speak and mention the word oneness. Mm -hmm. And that it's something within each of us already. Absolutely. So it's uh, it's it's basically a concept or, or an idea that's within all of us. Always. Mm -hmm. And if we kind of overlook that internal peace 
within, we don't see it outside either. If 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 we focus or look for that oneness within, we don't look for things outside. It's 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 all a part of us. Right. But if we look within and we overlook that peace is already within, then we don't see it outside either. Yes. If we overlook the peace that's within us, we don't end up seeing it outside either. Yes. And there's a there's a an 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 an, an ancient American Indian saying that basically says that. There, there's an ancient Amer Native American saying that basically confirms that or says the same the same thing. Yeah, it says the first piece is the most important piece. That the the first the first piece is the most important, the most important one. And that's the piece within. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the piece within us. And once we discover that it's true peace within, then we know it's also in everyone. So once we discover that true peace within us, that's when we discover the peace without or in others outside us. Exactly. And it seems like if we, if we don't discover that peace within, then we start looking for things outside that become kind of like addictions. If, if we don't discover that piece within our own selves, we keep looking outside for it, which turns into an addiction looking for this missing right. elusive thing. Right. If we don't discover the piece within, then it begins to look like we need to go get mm. something someone else has mm. to make us happy. Mm. If we don't discover the piece that we already have within us, and we constantly look outside to go get this piece from another source where we are the source ourselves. And it becomes an addiction because once we get it, then we want to get more. Mm. And that's how it becomes an addiction where if we, we, once we get it from the outside or think we get it, then we want to have more and more and it's never enough. <laughs> is never enough, it never satisfies, and it never gives us peace. Mm. So the peace we seek outside basically is never gonna be enough in, in we never reach that state of peacefulness within because um, we're always seeking it out. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like an oversimplified thing to say, just seek the peace within, it sounds like that's an oversimplification. Mm -hmm. Although it seems like a simple concept that we, if we are seeking peace, seek it within, it's oversimplified. I guess we'll have to try it out. Yeah, we have to try it out. I agree. <laughs> Everything starts from within. <laughs> that for that matter, right? <laughs> The love, peace. It's not about telling other people they have to. Be. <laughs> it's not about telling other people that they better try out the peace within. It's about each of us doing it ourselves. That's it. Thank you, Amana. I feel fully heard. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. I appreciate your words of wisdom. I'm the new speaker. You can pick any listener. All right. Today. Yes, I'm how learning. about you? <laughs> yeah, good, good. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, peace. So, I'll continue on that topic of peace. Um, I um, am currently part of the Peace Alliance. And given, as I mentioned earlier, a part of my life, uh, pretty much all my childhood in a conflict zone, um, I understand the necessity and the value of peace from a very deep part of myself. Mm -hmm. So your, your, your deep experience uh, living in uh, Afghanistan for up to when you were 16 yes, has, right. 
has made you to have a deep appreciation for peace. And that's why you are you're part of the Peace Alliance. Exactly. And I have recently joined the the Peace Alliance and the, particularly I'm an um, advocate. I'm a volunteer advocate for the Department of Peacebuilding. Uh, it's a legislation called HR 1111. And I advocate uh, working with the members of Congress for this legislation uh, to make a difference in, in furthering the cause of peace. So you're so you are so deeply committed um, to making peace happen, especially inst institutionally. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you are working with Congress to uh, to make it law as it were. <laughs> exactly. You know, push us to uh, push us to make it happen. Uh, exactly, and and basically that deep desire, as I mentioned earlier, that I have within me to one cultivate peace within me. Yes, and then try to build peace outside. So it started from inside out, which is what brought me to the Department of Peace Building legislation. So as it were, you you are living out your um, what you deeply believe. Uh, this is not just uh, uh, some volunteering for volunteering sake. This is your life. Mm -hmm. As it were, absolutely. And and what I have seen living in, in a conflict zone and now, you know, being fortunate enough to escape that, um, living here in the U.S. as a mother, I, I also want to build a world, a better world, a more peaceful world for my kids and the future generation. And, and as a mother, the idea of peace, in addition to having to go through a conflict, being in a war zone resonates with me as well. So you don't want to, you don't want to play the ostrich uh, about the past. You want to face uh, the challenges and address it so that uh, your children and our children can live in a more peaceful world. Absolutely, and 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 sort of not hoping, just hoping and praying for for what we want to create in the world. Um, we have to be it, and and then we have to be a part of the solution instead of focusing on why is there conflict and trying to focus on how we can build peace. So you want to uh, walk the talk. Uh, you don't just want to preach this. You know that you have the ability to do something, to do as much as you can to make change happen for peace. Absolutely. And I, I believe if someone a, a working mother of two young boys can can do this, I think every human being can do a small part. There is no small part. In fact, I would rephrase that. They can do their part um, to, to one, cultivate again. I'll stress again what Larry and I were discussing, to cultivate within and, and um, work towards that goal with that as well. So you have the view that if you can do it with all the responsibility of raising two giants, um, then so everybody could contribute something. And yeah, and I, I well, what I'm hearing is that you are saying that if each and all of us do mm -hmm. our bit, then That's we it. add that together, small plus small equals to big piece. Exactly, exactly. And and uh, we have a saying in our culture that they say every drop makes a river. Ah. And so if everyone did their piece, every one of those drops will become a river and a force for 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 the cause that we work through for. The the ocean comes from drops. <laughs> so it's important what you can do and what I can do. Absolutely. All of us together, if you do what we can do, then we'll have a global peace. Awesome. Network of peace. Yeah. You got it. Thank you, today. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. So I'm same here. I, I think it's my turn. Yes, and um, I think, Larry, uh, we, we should talk. Ready. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 found, I, found, I went to kind of speak to what you all have been saying um, because it's uh, really very interesting. Uh, 
So I quickly look at that and then come back to what is really fascinating, which is your discussion with um, Amena, as I said, powerful discussion going on there. So you want to speak to what has been talked about in the group so far, and you're seeing a powerful message coming forward in the group so far, something like that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I um, the, 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 of course it was good the way you started, um, kind of zeroing our mind to what we we're trying to do. And it was very powerful that you, you said 99% of conflict is people not feeling heard. That's, that was, that was huge, you know, uh, I, 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 I knew the importance of hearing, but I mean, you've kind of make it look even more important than I, I could have imagined. So it was very powerful to hear. I think it was Oran who originally said that, and I reflected it, that 99% okay. <laughs> of conflict comes from people not feeling heard. Yes, yes, yes. Um, now, the, 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 those other conversations were also very powerful. They need to be very careful about judging um, to realize that uh, it's easy to say, oh, why are you guys so violent? Uh, because it's uh, it's not being fair. Uh, it's, it's a, it, takes a lot, it takes a lot of work to make peace. So it's very important that we be very careful about not judging one another. And we don't say things like, well, you guys are the problem. So when we're doing that, we're just blaming others. And that's contributing to violence and conflict. It's not really hearing one another when we're accusing one another, something like that. Yes. And then finally, if I can come to the conversation I was hearing between you and Amena. Um, it's interesting, when she first spoke, uh, you, I, my, my impression was, uh, well, I, I heard you are me and, and I'm you, and which is which for me, it's, uh, it's fundamental and it's my attitude to the world and it's what strengthens my peace. When I'm looking at you, I'm looking at me. And something that was really powerful came up with the conversation, which was, you are me and I am you and we are one. To be able to recognize that as our true reality, a oneness without division and separation, but that our true life reality is one life. And that was very powerful because when you can see that in someone, you can see the truth within yourself. Thank you very much. And she, she rounded it off by saying, if we have that perspective, it becomes easy to do what we are talking about, which is here with the heart. And by practicing that perspective of oneness, then it becomes easy. It becomes natural to listen with the heart. And then it reminded me of what um, I was going to say before our time went up, which is why I teach empathic listening, um, asking people to draw blood by pinching the lobe, that the heart hears it. The heart hears it far more than the ear can ever hear. And this reminded you of why you teach your children, your, your students to hold their earlobes and to realize there's circulation <clears throat> from the heart and the heart hears far better than the ears. Yes. So that was powerful for me. And then you, you took it up and then took us in another direction, which was very interesting. Talking about um, uh, peace uh, really being inside and that 
The challenge is that we are not focusing on our own integrity, mm. on our own um, natural inner peace. I'm still struggling with it. I'm just trying to capture uh, those uh, thoughts. Um, and that we need to come back inside to adequately engage outside. Mm. And kind of like if we're distracted by the outside, then we're not focusing within our own heart. And we need to come back within our own heart. If we don't come within our heart, we become distracted by the outside. Something like that. Yes. And then the idea of uh, the Native Americans' uh, powerful message, the first piece is the peace within. And that when we discover, discover peace within, we discover it outside. Very strong words, as you can, as you, uh, as you I'm sure you believe. Mm -hmm. And the American Indian um, way of saying that the first piece is the most important piece, and that's the peace within. And when you know that peace, then you know the peace is everywhere, and our time just ran out. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you today. Thank you. Aran, will you be my listener? Happy to be, yes. And I just, I just have wow. You know, I just love this simple practice of reflecting what someone said and how it touches all of our hearts. Mm, so yeah, your your emotion is 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 amazement and and uh, yeah, the wow of of how this simple or seemingly simple practice uh, touches everyone every time. Mm -hmm. Because we're listening, number one, we're listening to one another. Number one, yeah, because, yeah, number one, we're listening to one another. <laughs> and today we're touching our earlobes, too. <laughs> yes, today we're all touching our earlobes. <laughs> and reminding ourselves of listening with our heart. And reminding ourselves of listening with our heart. And then we're witnessing what happens when we do that simple activity. And yeah, the, the, the witnessing. We, I uh, yeah, believe, we're all witnessing what what can truly happen when we when we do that and really listen with our hearts. And we don't need another PhD to do this. <laughs> no, and yeah, we we yeah we we don't need a PhD. We don't need to study much to to do this. <laughs> We don't even need to buy a new book. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even need to buy a new book. And that's what Oren said. It's like, it's one of our great selling points. Empathy is within. And and you say, yeah, what, what, I, what I reflected uh, was yeah, that it is one of our, one of our human traits if we, if we learned how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. It might turn out to be our most valuable human trait. Yeah, uh, yeah. You 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 think it might be well be our most valuable human trait. And I think that that old Babylonians myth that domination is wonderful was just a myth. Okay, so yeah, what you what you understand from the the myth of of the Babylonian myth. Um, is that uh, yeah the, um, domination is, is good and you think that yeah probably just just a story just a myth yeah it's just a myth and if we could just stop believing the myth long enough to listen to one another we have a chance okay so yeah if, and if we get rid of that um yeah domination a paradigm and and um learn really learn to listen then we have a chance of of pulling through um, all this conflict we see and then we could be shocked 
how could we ever have believed the myth that going to battle was the way to peace? Mm, so I, I hear that, yeah, you, you, you'd, you'd hope that once that enlightenment, um, that the domination isn't the way we could we could um, look back with with shock that we could ever believe that going to battle was ever a way of, of, of um, achieving peace. Then maybe we could melt down all of our steel weapons and make some kind of, I don't know, um, windmills to make energy, something like that. Mm, so, yeah, so you'd say, yeah, the whole turning uh, swords into plowshares uh, um, paradigm of yeah turning all all this money and 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 energy you put into the battlefield technology into into really regenerative um uses and maybe we could save all that energy chasing around the universe trying to find another place to go and just stay home mm-hmm so yeah, and maybe yeah, rather than having to yeah having to look out forever out into the universe, we 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 make this you know it, our our beautiful home, a, a, you know, a place we want to stay. Thank you, Aran. I feel fully heard. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. That was uh, lovely to hear. Um, I guess Amina, are you are you happy to listen? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'll be glad to listen. Thank you. Um, yeah, wow. So again, yeah, I think as Larry says, such it always um surprises and 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 uh, delights me how how this this process um um is is so special. Um, so you're expressing how happy you are with this process and how special it is for you to to go through this exercise. Yeah, and just how surprising it always is is for me to 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 realize I, I go in. I haven't done it for a while, but it's like coming back. It's like, oh yeah, this is it's so simple, but it's so special. Uh, it it reminds you that just coming back to it after a while that how simple this process is, but how special it is. Um, it's surprise you find it surprising. Yeah, and I, I always. Um, being the having the opportunity of being the the silent listener is is really great for me as well I get again I forget how that good that is because you you can kind of tune out a bit uh you know and let it flow over you but that when something catches then you mm. you have the opportunity to hear it again which is ah. wonderful ah. so so you enjoy basically um part of uh, being the silent listener where you listen to to these ideas, and even if you drift off for a second, there's a powerful idea that that draws you back in into that conversation and engages you again. Yeah, and also because you you get to hear it a second time yeah. because it's getting yeah. reflected back. So you yeah yeah you, you don't ever seem to miss anything, which is great. Yeah. So so you 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 when especially when you see it reflected back again or repeated again that. Is 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 it, it brings you back in and and it just um, highlights the importance of what you just heard. Yeah, it just it, yeah, it's a really clever clever way of of, of embedding and and uh, the 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 conversation and um, allowing it in a relaxed way all these 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 amazing uh, powerful and and emotional concepts to 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 permeate as it were. So you you, you find it. A, a very powerful and, and clever way that um, method to to resonate really powerful ideas and 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 help it resonate within us as we go through the exercise. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just I always go back. I I I don't know if everyone's aware of the the series Star Trek, but um, I'm not sure if it was one of the films. But one there was a there was one one episode that was, there was a amazing. I remember they had blue faces and they were brilliant at mediators just mm. by, by their alien um, skills. Mm. So it it reminds you of of a, a Star Trek episode where these blue beings or aliens uh, that came came on and mediation was their 
best skill and and it just kind of reminds you of that yeah and I've yeah I remember yeah it was because they were so empathetic they could see mm. all points of view and as a mm. child again I was saying you know with with my my experience of of, of my home home being in conflict it just seems it, the best thing to be would be allowing you know getting people to talk to each other mm. So it, it just what what that displayed in, in that episode of Star Trek was that empathy was at the base of why these people were so good at or these beings were so good at mediation. And and as a child, it reminds you that um, that basically that would would be the simplest way to to end conflict is to be empathetic. Yeah, and it's just it just seemed to me, oh wow, that would be a brilliant thing to be. That blue faced person would be I'd I'd really want to be be him or her. <laughs> right. And, and 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 you wished as you watched that episode that you you could be them as as it inspired you to 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 be that way and that empathy is what drew you to them. Yeah, I think yeah, that was it. And um, I haven't ever found it again on on YouTube or anything. But I I, I did speak to someone, and they said that they remembered it too. So I'm going to investigate and try and find it again. Oh, that's awesome! So you're you're basically trying to find that again and watch it now as an adult, <laughs> and and re re experience that. And so hopefully, I hope you do too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. I I feel fully heard. Thank you, Amina. All right. Thank you, and I was I enjoyed listening to that conversation. All right, I will choose Barry. Would you be my listener, please? Yes, I'm here now. Ready. All right, I'm thoroughly enjoying enjoying this conversation. Um, and I guess for me, going back to what Aaron mentioned initially, the concept of it resonated with me a lot of um, empathetic listening that it's it's deep listening to the other side that that helps resolve or melt away conflict mm -hmm. so i mean i hear you saying that um <clears throat> first of all you said you're enjoying being here and then you said you're enjoying what uh, aran said earlier about how the practice of deep listening where you're really listening you know, with your earlobes and your heart, mm -hmm. you're really fully, fully, fully listening to someone that you might be in conflict with, but you're kind of willing to hold your earlobes and open your heart, even for someone like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. that captures the essence of what I was saying right and um, in basically I think that's a concept that not only we thinking in terms of larger conflict but we can bring in every relationship if we can bring that asset in any relationship whether it's it's our relationship with a spouse or partner with our children at work um, it, it works in every single setting like magic that, that deep listening mm -hmm. so in essence if we just bring these earlobes everywhere we go <laughs> <laughs> and the earlobes are connected to the heart lobes and we use this heart to listen to everyone friends and family and co-workers and even people like that it could be like magic, something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we, we all strive to be the best at anything it is that we do uh, deep down inside and to be the best spouse, the best partner, the best child to a parent, the best parent to your children, the best leader, uh, it, if it's a job at work or coworker, all of it boils down to being a good listener. If he can genuinely, truly, deeply listen and understand the other side, you can be the best, whatever role it is that you are to anybody. So if we demonstrate by being the best authentic 
human that we are capable of being, being our true empathic selves everywhere we go, practice being who we already are, kind of fearlessly being willing to be that with friends and family and everywhere we go, maybe even in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> any <in the> relationship <laughs> will we'll get improved um, by this. Um, and I also think listening is obviously not listening audibly. Um, and it ties back to what Jade was saying is to engage your heart. To me, listening is is what he described as well, um, very eloquently. That you know, with that exercise of the year love, you you remember that you're engaging your heart and your emotions, mm -hmm. and not only you're listening to them, but you're understanding their feelings. You're understanding. That's what helps engages that emotional part of you or that emotional connections between you and and the person you're listening to. Mm -hmm. So there's more complete way of listening, maybe beginning with the earlobes, including the heart, and maybe even seeing, hey, the person I'm speaking to has earlobes. <laughs> they might have a heart too. And I want to hear their heart, mm -hmm. their emotions, mm -hmm. their feelings. I want to hear them. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and, and I think once we feel them through listening, to the, through this deep listening, we, we will understand where they're coming from. And there's no room for, for conflict at that moment where conflict literally melts away because now we're feeling one at once when we're feeling them. That goes back to what I was saying, you and I were discussing earlier. It brings us back to, to our oneness. Then we become one, uh, which then dissolves the conflict. And when we all practice this real feeling, listening, hearing the heart in one another, the hearts melt into the one heart mm -hmm. and the conflict is gone. Something like that. That's beautifully said. <laughs> Thank that you, Larry. Nice. Thank yep. you, Larry. I, I feel heard. Thank you. And you said it more eloquently than me. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. Jade, will you be my listener? I will be honored to be. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I really am amazed at the empathy circle just reflecting and listening the impact that that deep listening has yeah the the, the empathy circle uh, uh, impacts you deeply it's uh, the power of uh, how it uh, how it creates the ability to begin to hear again yeah and it really does become a oneness experience yeah, you truly really believe um, Amena that that's the key to uh, our integrity mm -hmm. becoming one with mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. and when I first started practicing this a little over a year ago well, so this is yeah, one year I was senior in the field of empathy circle. It occurred to me that listening this way is very similar to a type of meditation. Uh, this is uh, this is this is um, um, heavily reflexive. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a deep reflection, a kind of um, uh, mm -hmm. meditation, as you say. And it's in a very unusual kind of meditation because the 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 moment you're in peace is the moment you're listening. Mm. It, it, it's a common because uh, 
uh, it brings peace. Mm -hmm. And you're not listening to a bell. You're not listening to a chime. You're not listening to a mantra. You're listening to a divine child. So that's um, so. This is um, empathic circle is deeply, deeply, deeply uh, spiritual. Mm -hmm. And when you're listening that deeply, you're in meditation. Mm -hmm. So again, empathic listening is meditation. And you're providing a very sacred space for your brother to be themselves in. Again, deep spirituality is sacred. It um, facilitates the um, opportunity to, to connect because it um, humanizes the other person. So in a way, we're giving each other the blessing of acceptance mm -hmm. in the circle. Yes. So the empathic, the empathy circle is uh, uh, so a way of uh, provoking, uh, provoking the the blessing. It just it just took my mind straight to uh, Psalm one thirty three. Behold, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, because that is where God commands the blessing. Mm -hmm. So because it becomes the Ubuntu experience. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm. So that's again, uh, that's where the that's where you become me. That's where I am you. Uh, that's Ubuntu uh, Zulu uh, for our 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 deep connectedness, our inseparability from each other and one another. And it's a living practice of Ubuntu. I am, because I am with you. Yes, I, I, the, the, my, my, my sense of myself, my, my, my fullest meaning is my connection with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jude. I, I feel <laughs> <very good>. amazing. <laughs> it's very interesting. I'm. Uh, well, well, you've been saying it, uh, but but I don't know. It's really this is this is deep. I mean, this is uh, uh, okay, Larry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I think this is very, 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 very deep. I don't know. So you become the new speaker, and you can pick your listener. And yes, then... so I, pick, I pick Larry. Uh... Okay, ready. <laughs> <laughs> So, Larry, I, I said this is um, this is very deep. I I find it very very deep. Um, Jude, I hear you saying you find this very deep. Yes. Okay. I thought Larry was. Oh, sorry. I meant um, uh, forgive me, Oren. Forgive me. Oran. I, mean, I meant Oren. Yeah. Forgive me. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you, uh, G. A. Thank you. I I hear you say you find finding this a profound, profound experience and very deep. Yeah. I if if I could just I just realized that I need to go back to the conversation between um, Larry and Amena. Okay. So I'm hearing that you you'd like to refer back to the conversation between Larry and Amena. Uh, um. The Amena was talking about. Conflict is this absence or reduction of peace. Mm, so yeah, uh, um, you're reflecting. Yeah, you you heard that Amina saying that conflict is the absence of peace. Yes, yes. And then um, Larry, you know, citing the Native American, said, um, "Peace." Uh, Um, this um, uh, uh, so, um, the, the conflict he didn't use the word conflict but I understood that's what he was saying that conflict is when we look for peace outside mm, so yeah and so what I, you heard Larry say was that um, yeah the, the conflict is a result of uh, people looking for peace 
without rather than within. Yes, yes, and that's 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 um, that's um, really very um, powerful. In the first place, I've never heard it said like that before. Mm, so you found that powerful, especially uh, perhaps because you'd never heard it um, uh, put like that before. Okay, so again, I think what he did was just build on Amena's <laughs> concept uh, of conflict is absent of peace. Yes, so yeah, what you're hearing is that yeah, um, it was a yeah scaffolded on 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 Amina's um, concept of uh, of um, peace, yeah, peace being an absence, uh, conflict being an absence of peace. Um. Now, what's, what's really interesting, of course, is that you see the words he used. He said that we are looking for the peace outside, and that search for the peace outside could become addictive. Mm. So, yeah, what you, you found especially interesting, perhaps, was the concept that looking looking for um, peace or, you know, um, something that was lacking within... Um, could become addictive or the thing you you, you base that piece on that can become addictive is that is that right yes and that's the basis of conflict and violence so i, I um and uh that produces conflicts and violence thank you yeah. so 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 it's it's very it's very fascinating and interesting that what you are actually that what you what you sought out to look for outside was peace mm, so yeah what i'm hearing is that um yes what you yeah what you're looking for in those addictive behaviors um is, is peace yes so it's very it's really very interesting um that for me that tells me uh, that if we if we of course realize that what we are looking for is inside and if we can make empathic listening or empathic circle if we can make that a common practice then if we begin, if we begin to look for peace inside because mm. so we are hearing that if uh, yeah if people realize that re really what they're looking for is peace and that can only really be uh, be found inside uh, then uh, and and this kind of um this kind of practice can can help with that yes so 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 it's not that we should not reach out outside but we should know what we are looking for outside mm, right, yes right so so yes, so we, it's not that we shouldn't look outside, uh, but uh, knowing what we 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 were looking for is, is peace. Yes, and so we will 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 be unselfish in our search. Mm, mm. So our our our, our search becomes uh, uh, for peace becomes an act of selflessness. Yes, yes. So so I I I, I come to you, you know. To, to, to affirm your peace, to build your peace, and I hear alarm say actually. <laughs> yes, thank you. But I, that yeah. So I heard that you you said that yeah. I come to you to affirm your peace, uh, but also to affirm my peace. Was that, that, that what you said? Uh, yes, in in affirming. Yeah, thank you. That was what I was going to say before the, the clock uh, stopped me. Uh, as I, because I'm looking for your peace, you know, I find my peace. I get mm. what I'm, I'm, I'm interpreting what the two of them were saying. But, uh, mm. So by working for your peace, I'm also working for my peace as well. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Yes. My peace is your peace. Thank you. Thank you, um, Oren. I appreciate that. Thank you for Thank listening. Thank you, Jay. It's lovely hearing I feel, you. I feel very happy. I just want to quickly say I found the quote that we're referring to. And I want to paste it in the chat just so you can see that that original quote. And so, uh, all right. Okay. So yeah, I heard. I saw we got ten more minutes left. So um, 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Larry, would you, you mind? All right. Ready. Great. And... Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, yeah, again, <laughs> I'm just uh, expressing a, a, a gratitude for all, for all that's brought me here. Mm -hmm. So, Ryan, I, I hear you're feeling a deep sense of gratitude. Thank you. Yes, yes. I mean, I think, um, yeah, so much um, about opening your ears and your heart. I think is is very important. I, I just I, I'm I'm meditating on also being able to listen to ourselves. I'm hearing the importance of opening our ears and our hearts and being in that meditation state and being able to hear ourselves. Yeah, I think um, uh, interesting. I, I re quite recently heard uh, someone uh, from the Maori tradition being being interviewed about how they make decisions, and that they they try to make decisions uh, always from the stomach. And I think Amina, we're going to say goodbye. I think you have to step away for a few minutes. You have some duties. And then you'll be back. Okay, great. And Oren, would you say that one more time, please? Uh, yes. Just... So, um, yeah, I was, I was just um, uh, recently, quite recently heard someone from the Maori tradition being being interviewed and about how their culture is to always make every decision from the stomach. And and the Maori tradition is to make every decision from the stomach or from within, something like that. Yeah, from the stomach. He they specifically said from the stomach, and so for, yeah. So and they, that kind of spoke to me about really listening to your gut instinct, and that speaks from listening from your gut instincts. Yes. Yeah, so so they were saying they 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 made sure they made every decision at its base from the stomach. So they make every decision from the stomach. Yeah, and then they filter it through the heart, and mm. then very much, very quickly work out just details in the head. But because they feel that if it gets stuck in the head, then it, it gets all fucked up. You don't, you don't learn to listen to, you know, you don't really listen to your instincts, as it were. And this kind of stomach instinct intuition goes filtered through the heart, but just briefly to the head to work out the details, but not to get stuck in the head yeah and it spoke to me because we can very often i think forget to listen to ourselves deeply and we can talk ourselves out of the decision that we make through you know complicating it too much in the intellectual mm. so it brings out the importance of listening to the instinct and the heart and being careful about not giving the head too much leeway to talk us out of what the heart said yeah, no, the stomach and the, the yeah, yeah. Very, I, I, I want to push that point. The, the stomach. I think because for me, we have certain, you know, our instincts, you know, our gut is is uh, is is all about you know the millions of years of instinct that we have, and we forget to 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 um to to listen to that part because it's it's been um it's been put you know, put down as animalistic or or less than. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing you want to stay with recognizing that this is the gut, the stomach, this is millions of years of instincts that have been maybe lately put down or given a, a, a back position, not listened to, not respected, but that it's important that we regain that awareness. Yeah, I think, and it's for me, is about really, and I try to do this practice really listening to to what i'm saying because uh, yeah that gives me the inner peace i that but uh, it's, it's a hard thing to do because you know because of all the modern pressures we we we, we talk ourselves out of, of thinking we know what's best for us so you're working on practicing this listening to the stomach to the gut instinct and it's not easy to do because the modern pressures of our modern cultural civilization we don't we don't have time for that something like that 
Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, and I'll, I'll leave that bit there. I think I just want to say there's a, a lovely quote that a friend of mine has on his, his uh, he's a Buddhist teacher and he has on his email and it's to understand all is to forgive all. And there's a Buddhist quote that says to understand all is to forgive all. Yeah, and I think that yeah, and and just hearing you say that back to me, it makes me think yeah, we to understand all within us is, is as well is to forgive all, and that's where we we get our inner peace from. I hope. And to understand all within is to forgive all within. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I guess I'll 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 just say one more thing. I, I've been thinking the word vulnerability has has been coming up uh, for me, and um, I guess for me this this kind of process, this empathy circle, or yeah, speaking your truth, it takes a a, a degree of of being vulnerable uh, and putting yourself out there, and and that's maybe where the, the bravery of being vulnerability. People think vulnerability is weakness, but really it's it's bravery in its truest sense. I think. And the experience of empathy brings up the possibility or the the bravery of being your vulnerable self to put yourself out there to take that risk of being of expressing what's alive in you to be vulnerable in the empathy circle space, something like that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, having, yeah, listening again to you saying back, it, it just, it, it, it's a, the tool allows us because we know we're not going to get judged for what we're saying. We're just going to get reflected back. Mm -hmm. so it, it allows us to be more vulnerable. And the empathy circle space kind of creates the space for that because you know, Whatever you put out there, you're just going to get it reflected back. Yeah, not judged at all. Yeah, in its, its ideal form. And you won't hear a, a judgment back. You'll just hear what you said. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lara. I feel fully heard. Thank you, Aran. Well, I've, I've, according to the timer, we've got about seven minutes almost remaining. And I'm wondering if we would just like to, you know, go around and do a, a summary with one another um, without the empathy circle reflection, but just expressing that vulnerable expression of how is the empathy circle process? How does it um, appear to interact with um, conflict resolution or, or peace? Something like that. And anyone can go. Mm. I can I can start. Um, I just um, one one of the things that um, I've um, had to study is um, negotiation, and um, this idea of vulnerability came up. You know um, the humility and all of that, and what you said, uh, Oran, struck me too. That when we are in that vulnerable stage or what I call humility and we are humbled. Humility comes from the word uh, humus, which is black soil. And that mm -hmm. is where growth occurs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just see uh, Evans giving us the timer. We've got about 20 seconds remaining. <laughs> so I guess we can summarize when we get back to the big room, we'll express, you know, whatever came up for us in practicing the empathy circle. And so in five seconds, we'll all be back in the big room. And you, it's really lovely to meet you all properly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you. So uh, Larry is going to lead us in a debrief and then Edwin is going to close us out. So over to you, Larry. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so, to the best of my ability, I'm going to go around this huge room and ask everyone if they would take maybe 30 seconds to a, sh to a minute to share, you know, how does the empathy circle feel? Is How would it inter interact with peace, with conflict resolution? What was your experience today of participating in an empathy circle? How could this work out? 
And I'll start with, um, I may pronounce this correctly and I may not. Is it Iliona? Leona, would you share your experience? And I mean, we do want to take 30 seconds because we have 34 people and only like Ooh. 50. Yeah, left. maybe we could just have people raise their hand if you're going to do the react. Just raise your hand. Uh, Larry can call on you. We're mm -hmm. not going to get to everyone, just anyone that wants to share. All right, great. Would anyone like to raise your hand and take about 30 seconds to share your experience of the empathy today? And I saw Gisela's hand is up. Gisela? Go ahead. Hello. Yes. So I, I was talking about this with my smaller group, um, but I found the process to be complicated to navigate. And I feel like this is bringing my, I'm a, I'm a Mexican woman, I'm from Mexico. And I think that it felt very engineered to me instead of feeling organic in a way of being empathetic, active listeners that are reflecting the ideas back to the person who is sharing but also allowing for that kind of authenticity and flow to be experienced so that the full conversation works as a more engaging space. So I think that I love the basis of it, but I also found it uncomfortable because it just felt too structure and norm oriented in a way that I didn't feel as welcome or as organically present, if that makes sense. Thank you, Giselle. And Leslie, would you share your experience, please? Oh, sure. I always love being in empathy circles because it's so nice to know there are other people like us in the world who actually care about this. And uh, my experience today was just really wonderful just hearing about we had a group that was really about issues that were changing society and changing our world. And that's just so great. And um, just really, really happy to be part of this. And um, this is what will change the world. This is what will bring us to peace. Thank you, Leslie. And Beata, would you share, please? Did you ask me, Larry? If you would, please. Uh, for me, it was wonderful. Um, I always feel inspired by the topic and what people share and people I'm meeting. Um, so very positive experience. Thank you, Beata. And Alex, would you share, please? Sure, thank you. I was just um, respond well, going to respond to Giselle's comment because um, in my line of work in social work, we're often doing a lot of work in a therapy context where it's a very deep and organic conversation and lots of back and forth. And so I did feel that initially in our um, empathy circle. I thought, oh, wait, let the person finish or I'll just let them keep talking. But I suppose as we moved through one thing that one of our group members said, which was that an empathy circle is a really good structure to hold conflict. Um, I could really appreciate the methodology and the structure for, for being a space that because it is so norm oriented and, and offers so much kind of structure around listening and responding that I really value it. This is my first time. I really value it as being a place that can contain and hold challenging and difficult conversations in a way that more organic platforms might really struggle with. Thank you, Alex. And Jude, would you share, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm a professional mediator and a mediation teacher, and I've been doing that for 27 years. And one of the things I've been trying to do is teach empathic listening. And what this has done for me is make me understand what I've been trying to do. And so I'm going back a better mediator and a better mediation teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jude. Okay. Really nice. Amina, would you share, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Larry. Um, first of all, it's uh, it, I, like I mentioned earlier, this is my first time joining the Empathy Circles. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had Larry, Jade, and uh, Oren in, in, in my group, and I felt it was a privilege to exchange ideas with you guys. Um, the ideas you shared was profound and inspiring to me. And to Giselle's point earlier, initially, when, when we first discussed the structure of the discussion, it did feel a little bit inorganic to me and a little bit mechanical initially, as it was explained. But as we started conversation within amongst our group, 
it, it, it felt very organic. And I think we just made that connection with each other. And once we made that human connection, it, it felt like a conversation and it flew very beautifully. And I thought it was pretty organic and I loved it. Thank you, Amir. Thank you. Um, Divine, would you like to share your experience today? Would you share Divine? How about Crystal? Would you share, please? Yeah, as always, um, I leave the empathy circle learning something new about the people in our community, in our world. And I believe the empathy circle is that radical change that we need in war, you know, in peace and creating a world of peace and overcoming war and transitioning from authoritarian leadership into a democracy where we all have a voice, we all have a seat at the table, and we all have the capacity to speak our truth. And it's just a privilege to be here with each of you. Thank you, Crystal. And Sally, would you share, please? Yeah, hi. Um, I loved my group. Um, Nada left a little early um, because of a child. Then there was Samuel, DJ, and Ilana. And um, so the concept of a US bill, truth, healing and transformation and I just wanted to say that we need a bill on um, requirements that our legislature and um, well Congress and the president need to have qualifications in climate science and uh, medicine with PhDs. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, Sally. And Dwayne, would you share, please? Yes. Um, for me, as a, as a facilitator, this was a, one of the most challenging empathy circles I've ever facilitated. And it was a really great learning opportunity for me. And uh, I enjoyed the experience, even though it was incredibly challenging. Um, I'm also reminded about the importance, you know, I believe if I want to contribute to world peace, first, I got to work on the inner peace inside of me. If I want to share love with the world, then it's important for me to work on self-love. Um, I also think it's really important that the language we use to talk about these things also evolves. And that we could take a whole day talking about the importance and you know, how language influ influences our experience, how it influences my experience. You know, and so I'm gonna continue to do the personal work that I feel that I need for myself so that I continue to grow and evolve as an in person. And I will continue to participate in these types of activities because as a global citizen, I think it's important for us to find a way to speak and to listen to each other. And uh, I'm thankful for the people who set up this uh, opportunity and I'm glad I was able to participate today. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. And Samuel, would you share please? Thank you. Uh, for me, something I found resonating with the, our group was the, the deep desire, the deep desire to contribute to peace and how pivotal uh, empathy circles are to co-creating this peaceful world that we long for. And there was uh, the beauty of interconnectedness across uh, for different uh, continents from Africa, Europe to, to America. And I love that. Yeah. And I'm grateful for this space. At first, I was quite hesitant to step in as a facilitator because it was the first time being in this specific empathy circle. But now after the session, uh, I'll be glad and joyous to just step in as a facilitator after this experience. Thank you. 
Thank you, Samuel. And Branka, would you share, please? Thank you so much, everybody. This was this was really interesting experience, and I'm still reflecting on two levels, both on the format of the conversation and empathy circle, and then on such a rich content that people actually brought through their conversations, um, and uh, and realizing how important this is also on a personal level because I'm coming from a conflict country, from conflict area. And, and I'm just seeing the benefit of having uh, such exercise in my own community. So this is what I'm hoping we will have um, more opportunities to actually practice this type of, of conversation in our real lives. Great, thank you. I thank think you. we need to start closing now. Okay. And we're doing this again the third Saturday in January. But we always have empathy circles on on a Saturday. You can come anytime, and I'm going to turn it over to Edwin. He can explain more about this for you. Yeah, I'm going to put a, a link into the the uh, chat. Um, it's uh, to the feedback form. So this is a way for you to connect uh, with us and stay in connection. Uh, if you go there, maybe you can click on it right now while you're you know while it's still fresh. Uh, you just click on that and it'll open up a Google uh, form and you can go through and add your email, your contact information and just give any sort of feedback like you know if you had uh, you know, things you enjoyed or didn't enjoy about the empathy circle uh, practice, we'd love to uh, hear those. Uh, it is the, the practice I do find having worked 14 years now on the topic of empathy started the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy the empathy circle I have found is the best first step gateway practice to building empathy skills. It's really good for uh, just offering support to others, uh, for heading off conflicts before they happen, uh, facilitating conflict once they do happen, and for hearing people for designing solutions uh, to any of uh, life's problems and products and services. Uh, so it uh, has a lot of different um, benefits. And uh, so let me just see uh, what we have here. It, so on the, uh, in the feedback form, you can uh, give your feedback, like I was saying, and you can also suggest topics. The, we're gonna be doing these uh, with the uh, peace building, uh, conflict mediation, transformation community once a month. So we do have one, uh, it's uh, December 17th and then in January 14th hands so you get everybody doing jazz hands get a group portrait get those uh mirror neurons going <laughs> and uh see you next time it was such a pleasure having you all take part and look really look forward to you taking part uh next time and having continuing this conversation so goodbye for for now thank you edwin thank you thanks everybody thank you, thank you. stay yeah, after you. if you want to Say a few words if you're interested Kathy. in being a uh, Thank volunteer. You. Edwin, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, go. After we finish the 10 minutes, will there be an opportunity? Yeah, also we can do for... a debrief for facilitators. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you have a, if you're a facilitator, stay after too, and we can do a little debrief. So, okay. So, I wanted to say for anyone interested in being a volunteer, uh, if you fill out that feedback form, it, there is a link there for how to volunteer. Uh, you know, it, right now, the main uh, steps for volunteering is to promote the event. We have a LinkedIn and a Facebook event. So you can, if, if you go there, invite all your friends. That's a really good way to kind of send out the, the word. You can, on LinkedIn, you can invite uh, a thousand friends a week. And on Facebook, you can now invite all your friends. It's a little bit tedious. You have to do 50 at a time, but we'll send out those uh, those links and then you can just invite your friends and that really helps get the, the, the word out. Uh, offering. So, <laughs> oh, okay, got it. Somebody else is recording. So um, let's see, the other thing is, is uh, we have organizations, like we're looking for more co-hosts. So if you have organizations that you're part of, you know, reach out to them and say, hey, would you like to be co-host to this? And being a co-host is uh, to 
basically promote the event too. And we and we have a page that explains what it is to be a co-host and we can send you that. And then the next part is to, you can learn to facilitate uh, these circles. You know, if you just take part in two or three, uh, we hold these every Saturday. So next Saturday, we'll have one again. It won't be this big. Uh, it'll be just like an intro cafe and you can come every Saturday in this time slot. And you take part in two or three and you can, after that, you can pretty much uh, facilitate one. But we do have a five week training that will start uh, January 21st. So in this time slot, that really goes into depth. What do you do if there's, you know, conflict and you know all kinds of different challenges that can possibly come up in a circle and you can also in the feedback form you can also post ideas so i'll just take a few minutes does anybody have uh, questions uh, about volunteering or uh before we close i have a suggestion edwin okay for you in the future when we have these types of cafes in the beginning um, to encourage everyone to list which organization they're a part of um, in the chat to begin with. And that would mm -hmm. be, okay. I think also helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Uh -huh. Add your, your name and any organization. We have that in the registration form, but posting it here would help people yeah. too. To, uh... So who, who did want to volunteer? Maybe I should get a hands up, interested in volunteering. Ariane, Leslie, Alex, I see you there. Okay. And Mandeep, great. So yeah, fill out that form. Just click off that you want to be a volunteer and we'll send you an email. And uh, Sally? I see you had your sure. hand raised. To volunteer to, oh. for the next time around? Yeah, to volunteer, you just click on in the feed in the feedback form did, did you have a question or something was that no no, no. Okay. i'll look for that yeah that's the feedback form again i posted it so any other questions um, about volunteering yet um, i have a quick question uh -huh. um are these always um the same kind of saturday the same time or do they vary in times and, and days uh, they vary on times and days. We have a Monday group in this time zone because this is good for California where I am all the way mm. to Europe and maybe a bit farther mm -hmm. east too. This time zone kind of works for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do Mondays as well uh, and then Fridays and then there's Bill who's there has a, a group on Thursdays which is for educators. Uh, so there's various groups and we'll send you an email if you get on our if you fill out that feedback form we'll put you on our email list and you'll get announcements for upcoming empathy cafes uh, all right so you have special ones for for educators right 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 yeah uh, edwin Dwayne. i wanted to add too that we have a group that follows these same principles and practice uh on wednesdays uh we have a, a called Empathy in Motion. It's a meetup group. And we're also on uh, the calendar that Edwin's sharing the link for. And we, we, we're at the same time frame, but we're every Wednesday. Yeah, so we have Empathy Cafes almost every day of the week uh, somewhere in, in the world. So, and I did want to add, uh, I'm not I can't pronounce the name. Sorry, A D E. You had your hand up. You were. I just wanted to be sure you felt heard. Uh, and uh, well, yeah, uh, I was putting my hand up for the volunteer. Oh, you want to volunteer? Okay, great. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, and uh, Amina. Yes, I was just commenting. Actually, my question was similar. You already answered it. Um, that is it. Saturdays only. Uh, Saturday, I usually visit my elderly mom and have lunch with her. So this kind of con conflicts with that. So that's, I'm glad to hear that there are other alternate days. Um, and, and with this opportunity, I also want to thank DJ who invited me to this circle. This was my first time and I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Great. Thank you, DJ. Yeah, and I'll mention that the trainings, we have trainings in on Saturdays in this time slot. And then we have intro cafes, which is this is just an intro cafe. And we do the same on uh, Monday. So we'll have some right. intro cafes and then a training. And we rotate between Mondays and okay. Saturdays for these uh, trainings, the five-week trainings. And you can see the trainings at bestempathytraining.com. Mm -hmm. 
And if you, you know, fill out yes. the feedback form, form, we'll send okay. you info on that. Sounds good. Thank you, Edwin. Okay. So if there's no other questions, if, the, if you're a volunteer, you can drop out. Now we have some facilitators. Thank you. Who will have really a great debrief. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, everyone.